Hello and welcome to module 33 of chemical kinetics and transition state theory. In the last module, we discussed how potential energy surfaces come from. They really come from Schrodinger equation. There is no escape. Quantum mechanics is essential. Uh, and that potential energy is what we have been using so far in understanding rate theories. When we use this potential as a function of nuclear positions and that we divided into uh, electronic part, rotational part, vibrational part, the origin of that net potential energy really came uh, was coming from the Schrodinger equation that we discussed in the last module. Today, I just want to discuss something slightly different. Uh, there is a different way of computing rate constants which is via molecular dynamic simulation. So, let us discuss that today. Uh, first of all, do we really need this molecular dynamic simulation? We have studied transition state theory. It seems powerful enough. We can calculate rate constants for a wide variety of reactions. Let me give you a couple of examples where transition state theory is very hard to apply. These are called roaming mechanisms. Okay, so, I am highlighting here a couple of examples. Uh, this is one of the first examples that was uh, first shown H2CO going to H2 plus CO. Okay. Now, as it turns out for such a reaction, a transition state does not exist. Uh, you can think of this molecule, you have only 4 atoms here and as basically what has to happen here is that you have uh, H2 like this. Basically, this bond has to break. You have to get a bond here. This bond has to break and this thing has to go into CO. But it is actually not so simple. What uh, the authors in this paper figure out is that one of the bond breaks first. This hydrogen, this leads to basically something like HCO plus another hydrogen. Uh, this then remains like this this hydrogen then really moves for a very long time. It moves in a big circle. It finds the other hydrogen then and you get something like this and then finally you get H2 plus CO. Okay, so, this bond breaks and this bond forms. So, in all of this, where is exactly the transition state? Remember transition state is a very well defined structure. It is the maxima along the reaction coordinate and it is the minima along all other directions. Here we do not have one such concrete structure. You have this hydrogen which is roaming around like this. So, at which configuration I call it the transition state. So, the whole point of transition state theory is extremely hard to apply here. A similar example you can also find in this particular paper I have just provided you and you can look at this reference on your own. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what is an alternate? How do we handle such problems? If I cannot apply transition state theory, what do I do? We get back to the idea of Eyring and Poliani, what they had said in 1931. They had said that, okay, if you know this potential energy surfaces, you know this V of Xn, okay. Let us think of nuclei as classical, they are big enough. We do not have to think of them as quantum mechanical objects. We can just use Newton's laws evolving on this potential energy and calculate dynamics directly rather than going through transition state theory. Okay. So, let us discuss how that is really done. So, this is called a molecular dynamics simulation. That term you might have heard before and today I will just introduce to you uh, what is molecular dynamics of simulation? So, first of all, two assumptions go into molecular MD simulation. I will call the molecular dynamics as MD. One, I have what is I introduced as Born-Oppenheimer approximation in the last module. That is, uh, I can my potential energy is really given by a 
and v of x n is nothing but this. Okay, so that is called a born Oppenheimer approximation. I will not get into too much more details because that will require too much of quantum mechanics. The second approximation that we make is classical treatment, classical means nothing but Newtonian. of nuclei. What it means is we are going to use x n double dot equal to minus gradient of v of x n, where v is the same as this v. Okay. So, if I write this more clearly as I have been writing uh, over del t is v n i and del V n i over del t is equal to minus 1 over m del V over del x i. So, this is what is called Newton's laws that we have seen in this course a little bit more. Uh, derivative of position is velocity and derivative of velocity is my acceleration which is nothing but minus derivative of potential with respect to position. Okay, so, that is Newton's laws f equal to ma nothing more. So, we want to use these laws with this potential energy to run my dynamics. How do we do it? In an empty simulation there are a few steps typically and I will just provide you a little bit of a flavor of how these steps come by. So, the first thing is choosing initial conditions. I have to first tell you uh, where does this uh, this x n at t equal to 0 looks like and that really depends on what problem you are trying to study. So, let us say I am trying to think of some reaction A plus B going to some C plus D what should be my initial conditions? My initial conditions then should correspond to reactants at equilibrium, at again we want uh, this uh, thermodynamics to hold. So, we have some molecule, you have some collisions happening, you have some notion of temperature there. And I am thinking that uh, well my initially I should be reactant, I should look like A plus B. What I really mean by all of this? Uh, Let us just imagine some reaction, okay. I am just cooking up some reaction. So, initially X n should be in a state where hydrogen and uh, is far from F B R, from F and B R and F and B R are at a bonding distance. So, I can try to find out what the equilibrium distance of F B R molecule as it is, is whatever number of angstroms and I can think of placing F and B R that distance away and I think of H being very far away. Okay. So, that is my initial condition for this particular problem. For every problem therefore, the initial condition is going to be different and that is where you have to use your intuition. Okay. Modern day programs actually help you. So, if you use something like LAMPS or GROMATS, uh, by the way these softwares like LAMPS you can install on your desktop today itself. They are free software, you can just go to their website, download it and start running. And they will provide you some help on how to choose initial conditions. Okay, but uh, at the end of the day, you will have to tell what the initial conditions are. Okay. Now, uh, once I have initial conditions, what I have to really solve is a set of differential equations. Uh, my bad. Uh, X i dot equal to v i and v i dot equal to minus 
del potential over del xi. So, these are nothing but differential equations. Okay. Computers are extremely good at solving such differential equations. Uh, starting from perhaps 60s, people have figured out ways of how to solve these differential equations. Okay. There are a number of uh, numerical schemes one uses, something like velocity overlay, there are many others, Runge Kutta methods. Uh, so, we solve these differential equations numerically. And to solve these differential equations numerically, the way is we cannot solve it for each value of time. We discretize our time as well. So, we know our at t equal to 0, I know my x i's and my v i's, that is my initial condition that we have chosen somehow, okay, using our intuition where I put my hydrogen very far away from f b r or whatever. Then what I do is, I find using numerical methods at t equal to some delta t. I choose some finite time step, 1 femtosecond, 5 femtosecond, half femtosecond, whatever, some time step. And I use these equations to propagate x i's and v i's here. Okay. So, I have a differential equation and I can use a computer to take x i and v i at a given time to t plus d t. Okay. So, I keep on then doing this. I again feed these x i's and v i's to these differential equations and uh, propagate it here. And I keep on doing it to the time I want it. So, how long should I really run it? Uh, again that comes from intuition. I should it run it long enough that my reaction happens. So, it has to depend on rate constants. So, the idea is you usually run a, you have some intuition on where the rough ballpark of the rate constant is. From experiment or a basic let us say you might have done a collision theory estimate. So, you know okay the simulation the uh, rate constant is of the order of picoseconds. So, I will run the simulation for a few picoseconds. I will see how the dynamics turn out. Maybe I it was not enough, so I have to run it longer, I have to run it for 10 picosecond then. So, it is a lot of uh, in that sense guesswork. You, you run it, you see how the simulation results come out and you go back to your simulations and run it again. Okay, so that is how these simulations run. Uh, one important thing that I just want to bring up is the idea of equilibration. So, once uh, I have my initial conditions, I have chosen these x i's and v i's at t equal to 0, they might not be exactly at temperature t. So, our first step really is equilibrating at temperature. So, I have some temperature in mind, remember rate constants are always found at a given temperature. So, I have 300 Kelvin, whatever is the temperature of the problem where the experiment was done let us say. Uh, at that temperature I want equilibrium and equilibrium really means that my distribution must be obey Boltzmann distribution. So, if this distribution is not obeyed then I am not at temperature T. And so, the idea is uh, at the start of the simulation before I start calculating rate constant or whatever I want to find, I let the system equilibrate at temperature T. What I exactly mean by that? So, again I will come back to my favorite example of H plus F B R. Uh, so, what I do is I let hydrogen equilibrate at their given temperature independently. So, I maintain this distance large, 
I do not allow in my simulation I there are ways of constraining. So, I put a, some kind of a barrier in between and I say you hydrogen you stay there you can equilibrate separately you can get your velocities equilibrated far away. FBR you stay here and you get equilibrated here. So, the bond distance its rotation and vibrations all this gets equilibrated at temperature T as well. Okay. So, equilibrate equilibrate with constraint that H is far away from FPR. How to put these constraints is a matter of detail and that actually is really a, for a different course which is on molecular dynamics. But there are ways that I can tell that. Okay, so, I, I have put the hydrogen far away, I have done my, I basically do MD simulation at a given temperature and I make sure that H and FBR are independently obeying this Boltzmann distribution. After that, I remove my constraint. So, I have H, FBR far away, then the, I remove my constraints. So, here I am talking of a specific example. But for any given problem, whatever it is that identifies the reactants is my constraint. Okay. I will make sure that my initially I, I look like a reactant configuration. Okay. So, I remove my constraints and I let hydrogen uh, interact with FBR. So, I provide it with some velocity in, in this direction essentially and I let it a hydrogen come close to FBR. And once I do that I can run my simulation and then uh, this H and FBR will react and I can see this kind of a reaction happen. Okay. So, in MD simulation I literally follow each nuclei individually. I am seeing this hydrogen, fluorine and bromine. H is coming close to fluorine and really this reaction is happening atom by atom. Okay. So, uh, you can see uh, these simulations, many more examples of these simulations. You can go to this uh, website Hayes group where uh, you can find many animations of these simulations, okay. many movies of these simulations. And you can see how atoms really move, interact with each other and do a reaction. Okay. So, with this we end today. We have just very briefly introduced how molecular dynamic simulations work. We have not went into many details. Uh, the details are uh, too, too many to be mentioned in one module. And uh, what we can use these MD simulations is really follow all atoms and look at a reaction in detail. And once I have that information of all the atoms, I can also extract rate constant. Okay, so, I have the full detail of every possible possibility that is happening. With that we end today. Thank you very much.